Hey there, this is Ed Herzog, and in today's Elementor tutorial, what I want to do is I want to show you very special facts that you can use to capture the attention of your website visitors. Now, in Elementor, there are four different options, okay? One are animations, second are scroll effects, third are mouse effects, and the last one are sticky elements. Now, as I understand that the animations you can have access to regardless of whether you're using the free version of Elementor or if you're using the pro version. Whereas the other three, the sticky elements, the mouse effects, and the scroll effects, you would need the pro version to use. So as you watch this video, if you don't have the pro version, keep in mind that some of these, you know, you just won't be able to do unless you choose to upgrade to the pro version. So the other thing here that I want to show you is that you have five different locations where you can access these different animations, but not every location has all four of the different options, okay? May sound a little confusing, but let me just walk you through this here. So, first option is on, a, is on the background of an uh, image section. So, if you come over here to section and you go to style, and then come down here, you see there's a background image. And on this one here, you get scrolling effects and motion effects. So there's no sticky element and there's no animation effects for the background image of a section. For a column, again, now this one here, obviously I don't have an image on the section, but again, it's the same thing. If I come over here and if I come over here again, I've got scrolling effects and I've got mouse effects, okay? I don't have a sticky element on the column and I don't have uh, animation on the column, okay? So those are, those are the first two places where you can find these sort of uh, special effects. Then you can find them if you come back over here to the section. If you go under advanced, now this will apply to the individual elements that you put into the section, okay, as opposed to what I just showed you, which is for the background image. So for the individual elements, if you come down here, uh, go to advanced, then go to motion effects. Here you've got scrolling effects, you've got sticky, and you've got entrance animation. You do not have mouse effects here. Okay, now next we go to the column. And again, this applies to the actual elements that were within the column. Uh, so for here, it would apply to these uh, share buttons. Again, if I go under advanced and scroll down, go to motion effects. Now here I've got scrolling effects, mouse effects, and entrance animations. Here I do not have sticky. Okay, so I've got the scrolling mouse and entrance, but not sticky. Uh, and finally, each of the individual elements, okay? So if I were to go to edit, for example, this logo, this heading, uh, and come over here to advanced, and then scroll down and again, go to motion effects. Here I've got all four. I've got scrolling effects, mouse effects, sticky, and entrance animation, okay? So those are the options. Let me just then, what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through some of these, okay? Now, entrance animation is the, the kind of simplest, most straightforward. Again, this is available if you've got the free version or the pro version. Uh, so I could do something like this. Uh, you can fade it down, okay? So you saw that logo right there come fading in down. Uh, you can zoom it. Again, you've got various zooming options here, zoom in right. Uh, you can do bouncing, bounce in left. Just like that. Sliding, uh, sliding up. What else? You've got rotating, rotating. Here's rotate in, down, right. Then you've got a bunch of attention seekers. This uh, is rubber band. This one's kind of cool. Uh, so you've got a lot of different options here. Uh, wobble. Okay, so, you know, and you've got to think about like, what do I want to do in terms of attracting my visitor attention? Uh, I mean, a logo probably isn't really what you'd want to use it for. Maybe these share buttons, right? Because you want people to take action on your website. So, hey, maybe I want to draw attention to my share button so people will share my, my content with other people. Um, so, you know, you do have to think about how and where you want to use these. Again, I'm just showing you this here as an example, but you probably more likely want to use them for something like uh, the share buttons. Um, now on the animation, you've also have a couple options. You can make the duration normal, fast, or slow. So let's just take a look at that. That was slow. That's normal. 
and then that's fast. So you've got some options there. You can also put it on delay, and I'm not sure how well, this may not work out very well because I'm at the top of the screen, but you can, you can delay when it starts. So, and you put this in milliseconds. So if I put in 5,000 milliseconds, uh, let me save this and reload it and see if it works. Uh, let's go ahead and reload this. And what should happen is it should then wait about five seconds before that special effect happens. Now, again, you've got to think about like how many of my visitors are going to you know, stay on my page. I mean, again, you don't have to do five seconds. That's just what I put. But you do have to think about you know, how many of my website visitors are going to stay on my page for X number of seconds. Um, okay, that effect did not work. Oh, there we go. Um, so it did. Again, there was a delay in terms of doing that special effect, as you saw. So that is something you can do. Again, though, uh, you have to think about, do I really want to delay this or do I want my website visitors to see this right away because they may not stay on my page for very long. Okay, so animations are one thing. Second thing are sticky elements. Now, I already, you might have already seen a video I have on how to do a sticky sidebar or sticky column. If you haven't seen that one, you can find it on my channel very easily. I, you know, I think I've got like 15 or 20 videos, so it shouldn't be that hard to find. Um, so that is one option, would be a sticky column or a sticky sidebar. Um, you could also do, you know, a lot of people come over here now to my website. This here isn't my website. This is just uh, one of the templates from Elementor. Um, you can do a sticky header, right? I mean, that's a pretty nice effect. Uh, this here, my header looks a little, a little strange because I've got two YouTube buttons, one that shows up for um, desktop and the other is for mobile and tablet. Uh, if you slide over, it looks fine. Um, but you know, a sticky, sticky header is a nice effect, right? Uh, so you can come over here and here I'd want to do, I want to apply it to the whole section, right? I mean, I want this whole thing to slide down. Uh, so I can come over here and again, go to advanced because I'm doing the elements. I'm not doing the background image. So I go to advanced and then come to motion effects and I go sticky. And here I'd want to stick to the top, right? Now here's the other thing that's important. You can actually turn this off or on on desktop tablet or mobile. So, um, you know, you may not want to have all these special effects on everything, particularly on mobile things. You know, it's a, it's a very different viewing experience. So you really need to make sure, um, you know, Elementor has said these are all mobile friendly, but you do need, I think, to verify that, you know, how are these effects uh, affecting the user experience on mobile? Um, so I put that on and let's just see if this works. That works very nice. I think that actually looks really nice, right? I mean, it's a nice scroll down, it keeps the header there. Um, and so that works very well. Um, now it doesn't always though. I mean, if I come over here and I come over here and go here to advanced and put this one here on sticky. Uh, and again, we're gonna stick to the top. That doesn't look well at all. I'm not sure, you know, again, this isn't a page I designed. This is a page that is one of the templates from Elementor. Here, you know, it's, it's coming with me. It is sticking, but it just doesn't fit with the rest of it. It's not showing up very well. So, you know, if you were to do something like this, you'd have to make sure that it actually shows up well, like mine does over here. Um, so that is a sticky element, particularly a sticky section, right? That's what I've shown you so far. You can also, you've got options here for offset and effects offset. So offset, well, let me see if I can get this correct. I was fooling around with this the other day. I think here, if I put this on bottom, I'm gonna put a 500 pixel offset. You can only put positive offsets, what I found. You cannot enter a negative number here. So if I put 500, uh, maybe I do have to put it on the top. Maybe I was right to begin with. Yeah, so what happens, what do you see? Now all of a sudden this goes, you know, it moves. It moved down here and actually I don't, I did that didn't do that the way I wanted to do. I wanted to do that on just the share buttons, but you know, it does all of a sudden bring your, this part of your website to different, uh, different place. Again, you'd have to think about where or when would I want to use something like that. Obviously, you know, you've got your head over the top for a reason. You really wouldn't want to offset it way down there. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, but you know, again, if you were to, let me turn this off here. You know, you could come over to these share buttons uh, no, sorry, I got to go to the individual item. And I could come over here and again go to motion effects, put that uh, sticky on the top, and then make the offset 500. 
And now you've got these, these kind of share buttons here that are on the side that are going to go with me as I scroll down. I think something like that works a lot better. You know, that's, I mean, it doesn't really show up that great, again, because the, the contrast with the colors on the rest of the page don't really work that well with the share button, but it's not bad. I mean, it does draw the attention because it is moving as the person scrolls down. Um, so you've got that option. There's also something here which I, I'll admit I don't really understand and the, the instructions aren't, I don't find very useful. It also gives an effects offset. So I'm going to read to you here what it says on the inst official instructions here. Uh, the effects offset, it says, the number of pixels the user must scroll before the sticky effect begins. But I've tried various options and nothing happens. Now it does then say there's a note that says yes, effects offset affects only if CSS was added to the sticky element. And then they give you an example of a CSS rule. So it sounds, when, from what I understand, uh, if I put a number here in the effects offset, it's not going to do anything unless I'm also somehow using custom CSS. That to me is, is a little confusing because um, sometimes you might want to have you know, this sticky element delay. You may not want to have it start right away, but it sounds like to do that, you'd need to use some custom CSS. So uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to turn that off for now and put that back up there. Uh, you could also, here's a blog post. Again, this isn't uh, one of my, this isn't my uh, structure, my blog post. But again, as I mentioned, I've got another video where I show how you can keep, you know, a sticky element in a column, which, you know, sometimes people really want to do in a blog post. And so, uh, you know, you can again come over here to this particular element, go to advanced, and uh, come to motion effects, make it sticky top. And as a person is reading the blog post, my picture with my name stays there. So that, you know, kind of highlights to them who I am. Uh, you know, again, you might want to use something more like share buttons or a call to action over here to, to stick so that they can, you know, really tune into that. Um, so what else can I show you with a sticky? There was another thing. Again, you need to kind of plan this out. Think about it. Uh, here's a call to action right, that is a little bit down the page. And that actually, you know, I tested this out. This actually works pretty well as a sticky item. It's in the middle of the page. And uh, if we put this as a sticky, here we're gonna do the whole section because I want this whole thing to move, the background uh, color along the text and the button. And I think we'll stick it to the top, I think. Let me test out for the top. Uh, yeah, I mean, that kind of works pretty well, right? I mean, the person is scrolling down, they hit this button, this kind of call to action here, and then it sticks. So it's saying, you know, your dream vacation is here, book a, book a room, and that sticks. That, that's an effect that I think works pretty well. Uh, so again, you've got to kind of test these out and you don't want to, you know, you really don't want to overdo it. You don't want to have too many different things moving, sticking. Uh, you know, you really need to think about what do I want to draw attention to on my website? Uh, and you know, what do I want to draw my visitor's attention to? Again, I think something like this works pretty well. Um, so those are sticky elements. Now let's do mouse effects because mouse effects are pretty easy to, to uh, demonstrate. Now I'm not, you know, for myself, I'm not sure mouse effects are something I'd really use, but I will demonstrate them to you because they do, you know, they are here. So we'll come here to this item, this button and we will go over here to motion effects and go to mouse effects, turn them on. And you've got a few options. You've got, uh, you can do opposite direction or direct. Okay. So let's take a look at first opposite. Got it set as opposite direction. So what, what happens is as I move towards the button, as my mouse moves towards the button, it goes in the opposite direction. Okay. Um, now, if I put it direct, what happens is that as I go towards it, I can actually, you know, reach it. It's moving, but it's not really moving away from me the way it is with opposite. With opposite, it tends to, to move away. I'm not really, actually, it's not even really, it doesn't really seem to be working properly there. It is on opposite. So it should actually be moving away from me. It's actually moving towards me for some reason, but you get the general idea um, that you know, it, it moves, the, the item moves as your, as your mouse moves. So again, and it could have some effect, you know, somebody's scrolling down, if they're having to, you know, have their cursor over here, it can draw attention to this button, right? If they're not really paying attention to it, they can say, oh, wow, what's this over here? Um, you can also set the speed. 
Uh, you've got, you know, if you want to go like five, uh, that moves it a lot faster. So, you know, you can get up to, I don't know how high you can go on here. Uh, that's 16, that's pretty fast, right? Uh, so you can go pretty, pretty high there if you want to. Um, so let's turn that off. And, oh, actually, sorry, turn the mouse clicks back on. The other one then is a 3D tilt. So let's, oh, so one of the things then with some of these, the way to turn them off, you can see right now, hopefully, I don't know, maybe because I know the screen's a little small for you. Both mouse track and 3D tilt have this blue on them, meaning they're both turned on. To turn them off, right over here on the left-hand side, there's a little kind of half arrow uh, in a circle. And if you, if you hover over, it says back to default. So just click that and that will turn off that particular effect. So now I've just got the 3D tilt on. And again, you've got the same thing as a direct opposite or and the in the speed. So here you can see it's you know it's doing a little tilting there as I move as I move towards it. Um, so again, that's something that can draw the attention of the visitor. Um, again, it's a neat little effect. I'm not sure that it's it's definitely not my favorite, but you know if it's something you enjoy, if you think might have value to your website visitor, it's definitely something to, to consider using. So let me go ahead and turn that off. And now we'll get into the scrolling effects, which tend to be a little more complicated. There are a variety of them. And I've played around with these and found some interesting things. So the scrolling effects are probably things you'll mostly want to use for photos, you know, particularly for background photos, which is one of the reasons why uh, it's an option under the, um, oops, I've got that on button right now. Turn that off. Um, it's so one of the reasons why it's an option for the background image on a section or a column, because they do tend to work better for, for those. So you've got a variety of different scrolling effects. And again, these are ones where you can turn them on here by clicking on it, it turns blue. And if you want to turn it off, you go click, uh, hover there back to default. So here you've got vertical scroll, horizontal scroll, transparency, blur, and scale. Again, you can turn these off or on for desktop, tablet, or mobile, depending on how you want to set it up. Um, there's actually another one, which is rotate, but rotate you do not have as an option for a section background. So um, one of the things I found, this is kind of interesting, it doesn't seem to work very well on this image. And what the reason why I think that is, is because if you take a look at this image, it fills up almost the entire viewport of, of the computer screen, right? So there's almost nothing at the top, almost nothing at the bottom. It's taking up almost 100%. So I think that's why it doesn't really show much effect on this photo. So it works better, I found, for example, this photo here, which only takes up a small portion of the viewport. Or if you come down here, this photo here takes up more than 100%. So there's room for it to kind of do what it needs to do in terms of the scrolling effect. So, you know, you may need to play around with the size of your photos and that sort of thing if you want to use these sort of sort of effects. So let's go ahead and take a look at, because this photo is pretty big, I'm going to switch over to this one. Let me see if this is set. I assume this is set as a background image here. Yes, it is. So come over here and we can do a scrolling effect on this. And we'll do a vertical scroll. And, you know, you've got various options here. You've got up or down. Do you want to scroll up or down? You can do the speed anywhere from one up to 10. You can already see it kind of moving as I'm kind of playing around with this, right? It's moving there in the background. Uh, you can also hear, uh, sorry, lost that for a second. You can change how much of the viewport or where exactly this effect takes place. So they've got a, this numbered from zero to 100%. So if you think about your viewport, let me just scroll up here for a second. So this up here on the kind of right, uh, on the very top is 0%. And the very bottom is 100%. So if you move these, you can move these on both sides or just one of them. It will affect exactly where this takes place. So you may, you know, if I move it right now, I moved it to 23% and 73%. As I understand it, what happens is as this picture moves into the 23% of the viewport is when that effect starts taking place. And when it leaves the 73%, it will stop. So again, you need to kind of think about, you know, how does this look? And, it, and it's hard because again, you've got your computer, I've got my computer, right? Uh, your viewport is not the same as mine. So, um, you know, you may just want to leave it the way they've got it set. 
um, you know, you're not going to get exact. Um, you know, my computer is 14 inches, uh, but a lot of a lot of other laptops are 15.6 inches. But you've also got the minis that are, I think, 11.6 inches. So, you know, it's going to be uh, a little maybe challenging to get the same for everybody. Um, but again, you can do this. This is the again. If we come up here, I just put it as a down scroll, and let me move the speed up quite a bit. And let's just see. I don't know. Again, it's hard for me to know exactly what you're seeing there, but you can see, you know, you are seeing at the end that kind of island has a motion effect to it, a movement to it, right? Uh, this is down here at the bottom. So again, you can play with that. Uh, you know, if I again, if I change the viewport. How does that look? Come back up over here. It didn't seem to do a whole lot. Again, you got to play around with this a little bit. Here it is as a scroll up. So again, uh, you know, it's a neat effect that, you know, can draw the attention to, of the viewer. Uh, and you can combine these. Again, that was a vertical scroll. You could use, a, here's a horizontal. You can actually use horizontal and vertical, vertical together. Here you've got to the right or to the left, the speed and viewport again. So again, uh, we move this and again, I'm seeing the motion. Yeah, you should be able to see it now, right? The motion on that photo. Um, maybe didn't see it as much when there's just water, but when the island comes into play, then you can definitely see it. Uh, and again, you can combine these. You can make it go up using the vertical and say to the right using the horizontal. And so, uh, you know, as the person comes in, there, it's going up and to the right. So you've got those. Uh, you can also do transparency. So here you can do a fade in, fade out, fade out in or fade in out. Um, again, you've got a few different options and you can change the level of the fade, right? So you can, there's basically a one and that goes all the way up to 10. You can change what percent of the viewport is factored in there. Again, as I mentioned, uh, you've got cursors on both sides. So again, here it's set at 20 to 80%. So let's see, as I come down, can you see how that sharpens at the very end as I'm getting away from this, these numbers, the viewport numbers I have set? Uh, and now it's getting much, much, much sharper as I'm you know, getting up to this 80% or actually the 20% because it's moving towards the top, uh, you know, it comes into focus. So, you know, you've got some effects here you can play with. Uh, again, we can try a different one. Again, that one kind of came in at the very end, but you do see it there coming in at the top. Uh, the so again, you got to kind of play around with it, see how you want it to look for your for your website visitors. Um, here's blur. Again, you got the same options: fade in, fade out, fade out in, fade in out, and again levels and viewport. So. It's kind of the same thing, not that different from what we already, from what we just saw. Uh, let's just scroll up. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Why is my computer doing that? Sorry, I'm trying to scroll up and for some reason it's not letting me scroll up. Let's try to get up there. There we go. Okay. Let me come down and... Oof. So yeah, I think it's, you know, you can see it's getting a little sharper. You know, it was, it's very faded up here. Again, it's, it's kind of hard to see. Again, that's why you've got to really play around with this because this is just all mostly blue, but it is faded. Uh, I can turn up the level on that to make it even more faded. And then, you know, as it comes up, now you can see it. Now you can see how it got sharper right up in there. Um, so that's blur and then scale. You can scale up, down, down, up, or up, down. So again, and you've got speeds and you've got the viewport. So that one you can see pretty well as you, you know, as somebody comes in, this is scaling up. So they come like that. And then you can see that scaling up as they're scrolling down. Again, you can change exactly what part scales up or down by changing the, the viewport settings. Okay, and you don't have to do these on photos. You could do it on the text if you wanted to, for example, uh, you know, if you had a reason to do that. 
Uh, you could come over here to the advanced settings under this text, go to motion effects, scrolling effects, and you know you could do say a scale on that uh, and so let's see how that works so yeah so you can see that that uh, text scaling up as i'm scrolling right so you can do it for other things it doesn't you know i think a lot of people use it for photos but text works pretty well too now the last one that is on the individual items the last of these mouse effects is on the individual items but that's not on the photos, on the background photos for section of columns is the rotate. Um, so let me come over here to that and just show you. This one, I, I'll, I'll admit, I don't really see a lot of value in myself, but you know, you can rotate the text that away. But as they come in, again, you see the text rotating. It doesn't just kind of permanently move to the right or left. This is rotating to the left. Um, or you can rotate it to the right. Oops. And you can see, you know, you can combine these things. I didn't turn off the background image uh, effect. So, you know, you can see that it's getting both this, the effect for this individual text, as well as this background effect there for the section background. So those are the various effects you can do again. You've got the animations, you've got the sticky effects, you've got the mouse effects, and you've got the various scrolling effects. So um, you can do some pretty complicated and some pretty cool things. I mean, Elementor, the official uh, uh, YouTube channel for Elementor, you know, they show some pretty complex and complicated things. You know, I guess my, my personal bias is towards simple design. So, you know, I do like to use a little motion effects, a little animation, but you know, they do some really complicated things where they've got something from the top coming in and meeting with something in the bottom. And, you know, as you scroll down, it lines up like that. That's great. I mean, if you want to fool around and, and do that sort of thing, that's great. Uh, you know, I, I prefer simplicity. So, you know, on my blog posts, for example, I've got a, uh, where is it? Do I have one of my blog? Uh, let's see. I don't know if this one has it. Maybe it does. Let's see. No, this actually doesn't have it. But I do have a, a call to action at the bottom of my blog post. And I did put some animation on it. Because, you know, again, I want people to see that call to action to sign up for my free guidebook. And so, you know, it is on my blog post that, you know, as that, uh, as that call to action comes into the viewport, it does like a little wobble. And so that, you know, draws attention because otherwise people might tune it out. Uh, but, you know, I want to draw attention to that. So that's how I've done it. Um, so, you know, I personally like simple things like that. But if you're into more complex design, you know, you can take a look at some of these videos that Elementor put out and, you know, some of the tutorials they put out to really do some complex things. I like simplicity. So, you know, that's kind of what I'm aiming for in this video. Um, so, again, uh, if you're enjoying my videos, this is, I don't know, I think I've got six or seven different Elementor videos now. I've got a list of, you know, about 100 that I hope to make someday. So, uh, you know, it will take some time. Uh, but, you know, subscribe to my channel. If you've got questions or comments, definitely leave them below in the, in the question or comments. And again, you cannot use all these if you've only got the free version of Elementor. So if you do decide to upgrade, again, I always appreciate it if people buy via my uh, Elementor affiliate link. I do get a commission. It does help me basically keep everything that I, you know, I like to create things for free. I don't tend to sell things directly. It's not my kind of way. Uh, but, you know, so I create a lot of free content. And by buying via my affiliate link, I get some money that helps me stay in business and continue to make videos like this one. Um, so I will put my affiliate link in the description of the video. And that's it. Uh, hope you have a great day. Bye.